So I've been working on quite a few Tektronix scopes recently, uh, TDS 600 and 700 series mainly. I've got seven of them now um, in various states of repair and uh, ready to be sold on. I buy them cheap, fix them up and, and sell them as a working unit. Uh, and I've been coming across more and more a little bit of a problem. Uh, and it, the problem are these two pe uh, pieces here, these two chips. Uh, these are a battery-backed RAM. Uh, they're very common in equipment from the 90s. Uh, Tektronix use them a lot, even in their earlier analog scopes, the ones with the digital readouts and whatnot. And uh, yeah, they, um, they're reaching, or have very much reached the end of their lifetime. What they are is basically an SRAM chip. There's another one here. This is a, uh, TD, uh, a DS1250Y. Uh, it's an SRAM chip in there with a little controller chip and um, some batteries. So basically, these were used before they had, um, you know, NVRAM or uh, you know, flash memory or that sort of thing. So they use a cheaper SRAM that, you know, once you remove power, all the uh, the memory is erased. So they have the uh, the batteries inside. I don't know if you can see, but in there's a, like a kind of circle shape just in the body there. It's like a where the plastic is kind of formed around the battery. There's one battery in there. I think there's a second one here. These two have got two batteries. So we've got uh, a few different chips that are often used. Uh, we've got the DS1486, which is a uh, timekeeper chip, ramified timekeeper. And it's got a watchdog on there as well. There's a little uh, dog icon. And it's got the, the uh, real-time clock and uh, some RAM and all that sort of gear. Then we've got another one here that's a 1650Y. That's just battery-backed SRAM. And the 1250Y. Now, the 1250 and 1650 are, are pin-compatible. The only difference is the 1650, you can uh, write-protect individual parts of the uh, the memory as needed. I don't think Tektronix scopes use that. Uh, I've found in these scopes at least, both the 1250 and the 1650Ys used interchangeably. So um, I think they just use whatever was cheapest at the time, whatever they could get at the time, because they're pin compatible. Uh, so yeah, in our case, it doesn't matter, but just be careful in your equipment. Uh, if it's a different brand or whatever, they may need the 1650Y for you know, locking calibration constants, you know, right protecting that part of the memory or something. But if anyone knows if the uh, TD, uh, TDS 600 or 700 series, even the 500 or whatever, actually use that function, the 1650Y, let me know below. But as far as I know, you can swap them freely back and forth. So um, I've got to figure out what to do with these things because uh, these have got date codes of 97 and uh, what was it 97 and 96 on those two chips uh that's 1996 1997 that's like 25 years old they've got a guaranteed lifetime of only 10 years so they're well past their use by date um a lot of them are still working because the batteries just kept la like just last that long just because they do but i've had a few so far that have actually failed where um i'll reboot the scope and it'll throw errors because the stuff it's stored in the RAM is no longer there when it's rebooted, and um, you've got to reinitialize stuff. So, I've decided that with the, the magic of uh, CAD, and from my good friends at PCBWay, I get some uh, boards made. So these are going to be replacements for these chips. I'm not going to pot them, I'm going to leave them all open, so that way in the future, I can uh, replace the batteries. These ones, you've got to cut them open, and yeah, it's a big messy job to... Uh, try and replace the batteries in these things but these are going to be all uh, fully functional drop-in replacements with exposed batteries so yeah like I said we can replace the batteries and each one's going to have two batteries so you replace one battery at a time and you don't lose your memory as well you don't have to reprogram it it's not a hard job but it just you know saves that step so let's uh, have a close look at these circuit boards I'll get this off the bench and uh, we'll see what we have to do so here we are, zoomed in on the boards. Uh, these were a little bit more involved to get made than the um, the standard like prototyping service where it's like you know, a couple bucks for a, uh, a couple of boards. These were a little bit more expensive simply because the traces had to be so small. 0.2 millimeter with uh, traces with 0.2 millimeter clearances. And the vias, like the holes are like 0.2 millimeters as well. Uh, maybe even a bit smaller, 0.1 millimeter holes. I can't remember exactly. So these were a little bit you know, more expensive. Um, but they are beautiful. Look at those traces. Very nice production quality there. So uh, I th I'll get my thumb in there, thumbs up, pointing upwards for uh, PCBWay on their production quality there. Silk screen's uh, beautiful as always, and um, yeah, not a problem. So I actually had to uh, 
alter the footprint of this chip because, uh, yeah, the pads were just a little bit too close. And they're like, hey, make it 0.2 millimeters and it's going to be easier. So I did that and uh, they come out fantastic. So what we're going to do is uh, put all the, the chips on this. Some of them aren't, too, well, this one is a little bit easier. It's got like a much larger chip here, easy to uh, solder. The RAM chip's got some small pads. This one here is going to be interesting. Very, very small pads. So, uh, yeah, it's only a couple parts, though. One chip, two chips, two batteries, and then the, uh, the pin headers. And this one's the same. One chip, memory chip, pin headers, and then the batteries. And they'll sit that way up and plug in. So I'll go fire up the soldering iron, and uh, let's see how difficult this is going to be to put together. All right, so for the uh, Timekeeper version, the uh, DS1486, we've got the uh, RAM chip's going to sit there. And we've got a crystal to go there, because it's a, a real-time clock. And on the back, we've got the uh, actual control chip. Now those ones I bought from uh, eBay, because they don't sell them individually. So I've got uh, four of them here, and they're going to go on there. Um, I'm hoping they're good. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. It is they are in like a like a pack. You can see they're in the uh, the strip still. So I'm hoping because they're in that strip, they haven't been uh, black topped or whatever. Alrighty, got that lined up and taped down. Bit of flux, bigger the gob, the better the job. And I'll get my small solder. See how we go. Alright, so there we are with our completed modules. The battery sit a little bit higher than what I'd like. That's just the batteries I could get from Akihabara. Um, it's a bit hard to get batteries from outside Japan because of lithium battery shipping laws and all that, that crap. So um, yeah, I just got some from Akihabara. The, these modules are actually thicker than uh, the uh, standard module by about the thickness of the battery. You see that there, like that. So uh, they might have a bit of trouble fitting in. Uh, one of my scopes has the uh, the TV trigger board, which sits above these, and it's very close. So I might have to um, somehow drop these down to uh, fit them into that scope. But for scopes for TDS 600 and 700 series scopes that don't have the TV trigger board, you got heaps of room above anyway, so it's not a problem. Because these are going to go into a, a scope without that TV trigger board anyway. I'm waffling. So uh, I'll get the uh, scope on the bench and we'll have a look and see where these things are going to go. Alright, so I've got a uh, TDS 620B here. This has been modded up to a 680B. And um, I've gone through and uh, repaired this thing. It was, um, <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, the amount of nicotine stains and uh, gross stuff that's going on here. It's been fully stripped down and rebuilt and repaired. There was a few problems which I've, uh, I've fixed up. But um, one of the things I did was I put the uh, sockets on the uh, the NVRAM chips, these two here, that's what we're going to put these ones in. And um, so that's a good idea if you're going to replace them. If you're going to desolder the old chips, you might as well put a, a socket in, a nice uh, turned pin socket, the little round ones, that um, the little round pins that are really high quality. 
And that means uh, in the future, you don't have to desolder it and resolder it and desolder it and whatever, and you don't risk damaging the board. So, uh, like I said, I've already got this thing working. This uh, scope does work properly. So it's a good test bed, seeing as I've got it here on the bench anyway. So you're going to have to uh, copy out the old uh, firmware and um, the old NVRAM. This is actually a good chance to upgrade your firmware if uh, if you've got an earlier firmware. If you head over to the Tech Wiki, the Tektronix Wiki, and uh, look for your scope, you'll f you, know, you might find some... Uh, some firmware. I've been uploading firmware periodically as I come across it, so you might find a newer firmware version, and it's always a good thing to upgrade and uh, you know get better stability or get better options. I know with the uh, 785, the 785C, you need firmware option 5.3 for the hard drive. So if you add a hard drive uh, option, you need firmware version 5.3. Um, if anyone has that <laughs> that version, yeah, um, give it to me if you can because I'm looking for it. Anyway, uh, you want to download the firmware and the NVRAM, and then when we put the new chips in, we'll put it into programming mode, and we can upload that back into the uh, into the new chips, and hopefully it all works. So we've got to uh, unplug these. If I can get them out, there we go. There we go. Number one and two. So. The top one, or the one towards the back, is our 1486. That is correct, isn't it? 1486. Okay, and I've got the uh, little bevels on the, the corners there to indicate which direction it faces, and that is that direction. So that goes in there. And then the 1250, which is the same as a, a 1650, functionally the same. That one in this application anyway. That one goes in there. So that hopefully should be good. So if I turn that on it's going to give me errors. So uh, what I'll do is I'll load the uh, the firmware and the NVRAM in and we'll be back and see if it boots. Now if you're wondering how to do that uh, there'll be a link in the description down below in the, uh, the video description to the EV blog forum where there's a post there which goes step by step exactly what you have to do, what you have to type into your command line. You need a Windows machine um, and yeah, it's, it's really easy, but there's a step-by-step uh, -step guide on how to do it. And if you follow that, you should be fine. Uh, I could go through it here, but it's, it's yeah, you may as well read the instructions one by one and um, yeah, do it from the, uh, the forum. It's going to be easier than pausing and playing a video for each step. So one moment, we'll be back. All right, so let's see if this thing works. Moment of truth. It does turn on, but... That's going to happen anyway because that's uh, independent of the uh, the boot, the power supply turning on. Give it a second. Give it a sec. Oh, hey, it's working. It is booting. Hang on, hang on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah, it does take a little while. These these scopes do take a little while to boot. We've got the uh, the clock. We got the clock. Things are ticking away. The uh, attenuators are going click, click, click. Come on, you can do it. Pass all the tests. Can you pass all the tests? We've got a screen building up. So far, so good. Once we get that boot screen, the uh, the display. Yes, yes, it's working. If there was any errors, it will show a different screen here that tells us where the error is, if it's on the acquisition board or the processor board or whatever. But we are getting all the options of it enabled. Firmware 4.4.1e. 4 4 yeah, we're good. Look at that. Fantastic. It is working. Awesome. So that's pretty much it then. <laughs> we're done. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah. Don't forget, um, check out the PCBWay website. They do make some really good stuff, um, as I always say, because I always get good stuff from them. Um, and, yeah, uh, hope you found that informative, somewhat interesting. We will see you in the next one.